For more than a century, the old red brick building at 335 Young Street marked the beginning of Gould Street. Its corner tower witnessed history. It saw the creation of Canada's first subway and then watched as the city's architecture and people transformed around it. For those in the city today, it would become known as Salad King. But what used to be a rock and roll bar is now rocks and rubble. On January 3rd, a frigid Monday morning, Salad King burnt down. 120 firefighters rushed to the scene to battle the six alarm fire. And it took Toronto firefighters almost two days to extinguish it. But the fire wasn't the first unfortunate event to hit Salad King. Last May, a section of the building's wall collapsed onto Gould Street. It's an area normally bustling with students and pedestrians. While no one was hurt, several businesses were not as lucky. Their closures were unavoidable, but not unfamiliar. Before the collapse, at least two businesses failed within at least three years on the corner. The fire wasn't surprising to some, like interior design professor Lloyd Alter. You've got a fundamental disconnect with what you're allowed to build, which is six or eight or 12 stories, and a little three-story building there. There's just too much development pressure to have a building like that really survive. You see it everywhere. Investigators haven't found the cause of the fire, but Alto says the fire is a convenient coincidence. And if they can't build what they want, then they often things happen so that they can build what they want. Kristen Wong Tam isn't blaming anyone either. Wong Tam is a city councillor for Ward 27, and she's been working to restore the Salad King building since coming into office. It's, uh, it's a very unusual fire simply because uh, the elements of combustion were not on site. We don't have hydro, we don't have gas, the water was shut off, the building was secured, it was supposed to be emptied, so what would have caused the fire? That's what police officers are investigating. Um, we have, as a result of one of the local business orders, we have obtained uh, CCTV footage uh, of a person of interest. There's a video that shows a, a person of interest um, that we would like to identify uh, in the area, heading towards the building at approximately 1.30 a.m., the night of the fire, and then uh, leaving the area as well, approximately 3.50 on the night of the fire. Now, investigations are still continuing. Police are still looking for their person of interest. Ryerson, for their part, is interested in the property behind me. They say they want to use it as an access point to Dundas Station. David Thurton, RUTV News.